about nature. And so we're going to first start with the Redwood National Forest. I'm just going to turn this a little bit for my remote learners. I already been there. Redwood National Forest. What would it be like to be standing in a forest of giant trees? The tallest trees in the world grow here. Like mighty giants, their heads touch the clouds. Thick branches, broad as a giant's shoulders, hold up the sky. All along the coast stand trunks as wide as the legs of a giant so wide around it's a hike to circle just one and far far down below twisted roots reach deep underground i wonder are they as long as a tree is high okay so we have talked about the redwood forest do you guys remember talking about these huge yeah. trees mm -hmm. Addie, do you remember where these trees are like kind of located Do you remember? No, I only remember about talking about it. Okay. Um, Raylan, do you remember where these trees are at? Where's the Redwood National Forest? No. You don't remember? Why it's you? Close. California. So you probably see these big, big trees near California. And who knows when they were reading this? Was this a story they were reading? Or what were they reading? They were talking how big they were. Bertha, what were they reading though? Do you know what it was called? About the Redwood Forest. Yep. But they were reading a poem. And you guys didn't really even know it quite yet because we haven't talked about the elements of a poem. But what they just read was a poem. And in this poem, the author used some similes. Did you guys hear any similes? No. Do you guys remember what similes are? Um, yeah, with the things we have on our face. Yeah, they're the ones that we have up here. Abby knows our similes are up here. So similes use like or as to compare things. And in this poem, um, one of the similes said the thick branches were broad as a giant's shoulders. So look at these branches on these trees. Now who knows what broad means? As a giant's shoulders. Okay, I want you to think of Okay, we know giants are made up. They're not real. <laughs> Think of a fairy. Fairies are made up. Are fairies big or small? Small. Small. Think of their shoulders. Their shoulders are tiny. Now, think of a giant's shoulders. They're going to be broad. So broad is kind of like wide or big. So they were comparing. They, they, they were comparing in this poem the broad branches to a giant's broad shoulders. Then another simile they said was, the tree trunks stand as wide as the legs of a giant. So again, they're comparing how big these tree trunks are to the legs of a giant, okay, which means that they're really big. Addie? Like how long it would take to do what? Climb up one. To climb up one? Is that what you said? Yeah. It would take a while. Five years. Okay, let's go on to the next one. I'm um, really did you have something you want to say? I wonder if you like they just the top and go down. Right. If you ever get up there. Right, if you ever get up there, and then what you would see when you were up there. Brooklyn. I love it as if we have a um, I, I, I uh, went there for, I went there just for a little bit, and like, it was like, we had, like, I was like, I went the wrong way, sort of, but like, I was like, kind of getting lost, but like, it was really fun. Okay, alright, we're going to go on to the next one. Redwood okay. National Forest. Sorry, that's the one you press the wrong button. Now, we're going to do the Amazing Meadow. Ooh, I love now, you might see a meadow around here. This is, again, a pole. This poem's gonna have six lines. And as we're listening to the poem, I want you to listen for two words that rhyme. And they're gonna be at the end of the line. Okay, so be listening for rhyming words. We'll see if we can find the six rhyming words. 
The amazing meadow. How very amazing a meadow can be. Spring, summer, fall, winter, there's so much to see. The meadow's a carpet of flowers in spring, swaying like dancers as meadowlarks sing. In summer, the meadow is sun-baked and still, except for plump honeybees down from the hill. All right, who could find the words that rhyme? There, was, there were six of them, so two sets of, or three sets of two. Louis, what was two of the words that rhyme? Spring and sing. Spring and sing, good job. What was another one, Brooklyn? Uh, it was at the beginning, but I don't remember the words. You don't remember the words? It was at the beginning. Well, I guess, do you remember? Hill and still. Who remembers the very first two? How very amazing a meadow can be. Spring, summer, fall, winter, there's so much to see. So what's the two verb C, C and B. Good job. C and B. C and B. So this week, we're going to learn that poems have rhyming words. And on Friday, when you make your poem, your poem is going to have rhyming words too. All right, our next one is continuing this poem. All right, so there are again six lines and there are three sets of two rhyming words. Okay, so listen and see if you can find some rhyming, rhyming words. Autumn brings leaves orange, red, yellow, brown, swirling and twirling and floating down, down. In winter, the meadow lies under deep snow, waiting for spring when the flowers can grow. How very amazing a meadow can be. Spring, summer, fall, winter, there's so much to see. John, what were two words that rhyme? words. Raylan? Twirling and twirling. Twirling. Oh, you know what? You Those rhyme. Right. Those are at the beginning of the of the line, but I'm going to count them. So they do rhyme. Good job. They're just not quite at the end, but it's okay. Um, Lewis. red, yellow, and brown, swirling and twirling, and floating down, down. <gasps> Riley? Oh, down, down. down is one. Five, Ellie, what's the other one? Brown. Brown. Oh, brown and down. Okay, that was okay now, sure. here's the next two lines. In winter, the meadow lies under deep snow, waiting for spring when the flowers can grow. Everybody? Snow! 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 I know, you found it. Good job. Okay. Any of your senses, like you hear anything, smell anything, taste anything, see anything. Okay. The Sahara Desert. Sand, sand, swirling sand, a sea of swirling sand. No ships, no fish, no seagulls, just miles and miles of sand. Whoosh, whoosh, the lonely wind moans through the vast dry land carving dunes high as the sky, like islands in a sea, a sea of swirling sand. So you can see the sand has been swirling from the wind, creating these huge dunes. And they're called dunes. Can you guys tell Mrs. Murphy, what were some of the words the author used to make us like hear it? There was a couple words that when the author said it, I was like, oh, I can hear it. 
read it. I don't know if I wrong. I'm gonna I'm gonna play it again. I want you guys to listen to it. How many hundred? The Sahara Desert. Sand, sand, swirling sand. A right there. What was one? of swirling sand. No ships, no fish, no seagulls, just miles and miles of sand. Whoosh, whoosh. What were the two words right there? Whoosh, whoosh. whoosh. When you hear that sound, they're the same word. So we have swirling, we have whoosh. Then the wind moans through the vast dry land, carving dunes high as the sky, like islands in a sea, a sea of swirling sand. Okay, do you have one, Libby? Swirling sand again. We say good job. And they also use the word, which is a hard word. You guys might not know this word, but moans. Do you guys know what moans means? Like if you ever get hurt, or sometimes if you don't feel good, I know sometimes when my tummy doesn't feel good and I'm sick, like with the flu, I'll be like, oh, like I'm moaning. That's kind of what they're talking about. You can hear the wind moaning. It's making this loud, kind of like noise and moan. Like, yep. like, yep. Okay, so all this week, guys, we'll be talking about nature and we'll be talking about poetry and we'll be talking about the different elements of poetry, okay? It'll be a fun week. All right, so we're gonna stop now. Mr. Lovely.